Eggs you might on toast. How do you like to start your day? Maybe you prefer poached eggs on sourdough, or my own personal favourite, scrambled eggs on Turkish bread. Whatever your breakfast menu looks like, chances are that if you're in Australia, you have the Western Australian wheat belt to thank for part of it. Word on the street has it that city folk have lost our connection with the land, but I disagree. With every meal, we reconnect with the land, with the farmers and the soils that nurture our food. Together, we are going to go on an adventure to explore how soils, climate change, and our actions are connected, and what each one of us can do with this idea to reverse climate change and feed the planet. Soil is just so fascinating, and there are endless questions to explore. The main question, which has preoccupied me for the past 20 years, has been how can we harness the potential of soils to remove carbon from the atmosphere, to improve the health and productivity of our soils, and also to reverse climate change? There are three main ingredients plants, microbes, and agriculture. Right now, all around us, plants are doing this incredible thing called photosynthesis. Plants take carbon out of the atmosphere, sucking it in through tiny holes in their leaves called stomata. Inside their bodies, plants transform this gaseous carbon into solid carbon, long chains of it, carbohydrates, sugars, lignans. Plants are making food inside their bodies, the food that they need, that we humans like to eat too, and that soil microbes also are salivating for. Soil microbes also find plant food delicious. Plants take carbon out of the atmosphere and put it into the soil as roots. Root exudates, which is a kind of plant snot, that plants cunningly swap with microbes in exchange for nutrients from the soil, and also as plant litter, which is simply dead plant material on the soil surface. Soil microbes love to eat this stuff. It's like tiramisu to them. Here is the really incredible thing about soil microbes. These tiny beings are carbon converters. Microbes love to eat dead plant material. Roots, snot, litter, and all. Decomposition is what we soil scientists call this process. Microbes decompose plant material, transforming it into one of three things. One, their own bodies. Microbes eat plant material to survive, grow, and reproduce. Two, carbon dioxide. Microbes breathe out some of the dead plant material that they can't use as carbon dioxide, which moves back up through the soil and into the atmosphere. Three. Microbes transform tasty plant carbon into less palatable forms of carbon that remain in the soil in solid form and can stay there for hundreds, even thousands of years. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that soil carbon is stable or that it will all remain in the soil for hundreds of years once plants and microbes work together to put it there. Soil carbon is present in lots of different forms, from the tiramisu soil carbon, which microbes eat first, through the Brussels sprout soil carbon, maybe, if they're really hungry, to the soil carbon version of what I cooked for dinner last Tuesday, which, if you believe my children, nearly killed them. <laughs> Not worth eating, even if you're starving. Carbon is moving from the atmosphere, through plants, into the soil, and back up 
into the atmosphere again, with some of it remaining in the soil for quite a while. Then we arrive. Agriculture. With agriculture, we interrupt this cycle, transporting some of the plant material off-site, from Wongan Hills to Perth. Wheat grows in Wongan Hills. We eat the grain from the wheat plant here in our breakfast in Perth. Agriculture across the planet has tended to mine carbon and nutrients from the soil. Industrial agriculture and individual farmers who can afford to return nutrients back to the soil by adding fertilizer. But there's still been an overall decline in the health of our soils. The good news is that here in Western Australia, researchers have been exploring how we can improve the health of our soils. And so farmers and researchers have come up with some really innovative land management practices to improve soil health. The example that I'd like to share with you today is claying. You probably know clay as that smooth brown stuff from pottery class. I think of clay as the smallest soil particles, one fifth of a millimetre across and smaller. These tiny soil particles are super attractive to soil carbon, to water, and also to soil microbes. Most of our cropping soils in Western Australia are sandy, with hardly any of these super attractive clay particles. But beneath the surface lies something more valuable than gold. To a soil scientist or a farmer, a layer of soil rich in clay. We call these soils duplex, two layers. Claying is what we call the agricultural land management practice of mixing these two layers to bring some of the clay particles up to the surface where they can interact with plants, water and soil microbes. Claying results in more crops and also more carbon stored in the soil. In this trial, the clayed soil held 25% more carbon, 10 years after the clay treatment. And the farmer who hosted this research on his farm was so happy with the outcome that he's ended the experimental trial and clayed the whole farm. This is just one example of the many different kinds of land management practices that farmers can and are using to improve the health of their soils and grow more crops. So, what can I, as someone who lives in the city with a teeny tiny garden, do with this idea that we can manage land differently to store more carbon in the soil and grow more food? Let me share my vision for the future with you. By 2020, the idea that soils and climate change are connected, that we can reverse climate change and grow more food by changing the way we manage the land, has spread throughout the supermarkets, the banks, the Houses of Parliament, and most importantly, the hearts and minds of people around the world. Western Australia is leading the way with a soil carbon certification scheme that enables consumers and investors to support farmers to do this. As profits of soil carbon certified businesses increase, farmers and agribusinesses around the planet quickly jump on board. Public and private investment enables farmers to access the upfront capital they need to make changes to how they manage the land. And by 2030, my boys cycle off to their Saturday morning sport and I indulge in a slow morning, enjoying my soil carbon 
certified scrambled eggs, on soil carbon certified Turkish bread, relaxed and content in the knowledge that we have reached net zero emissions, averted the climate emergency, and no one on the planet is going hungry this morning. Thank you.